So let's look at the difference between an equation and an apparent formula. And it turns out the only difference is the context. We call it an apparent formula when we are specifically looking at a sequence. And it's an equation when we look at things called functions. Um, and an apparent formula is the equation for a sequence. So there's really no difference. And the work you use to find an apparent formula is the same as the work you use to find an equation. It's just a slightly different context. And it looks a little different. So let's go and start with what we know. We know that we have a sequence here, and we can write the apparent formula for this sequence if it is linear, or sorry, arithmetic or geometric. And so if I look at this, um, I'm either adding, to, I could be adding 24 each time, but that's obviously not happening here. Or I can think of it as, oh hey, I'm multiplying by three. And I'm multiplying it by three and multiplying it by 3, which means this thing is geometric. And remember, the apparent formula for a geometric sequence is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1, where a sub 1 is the first term, r is the common ratio, and n is the term number. So just plugging in what I know, I know the first term, and I know the common ratio. So this thing's apparent formula, or this sequence's apparent formula, is 12 times 3 to the n minus 1 power. Okay, now I can change the context of this exact same sequence. Instead of writing it in sequence format, I can write it instead as a table with x and y. So the first term, I'm not going to think of it as a first term, but I'm going to think of it as x equals 1, and then y is 12. x equals 2, and y is 36. x uh, equals 3, and y is 108. And then x equals 4, and y is 324. And if I want to write an equation for this table, or write, find the equation that generates this table, then um, I do the exact same thing I did here. The difference is, instead of using a sub n, I'm going to use y, and instead of using n, I'm going to use x. But everything else is the same. I still need to find that common ratio. We think of it more as a, as a multiplier in this case, and we know it's already times 3. And I know a repeated multiplication always becomes an exponent in equation format. Oh, I'm not using n. Sorry. I'm going to use x. Um, then I just have to do one of two things. I can actually treat this exactly like the apparent formula and say x minus 1 instead of n minus 1, and then find the y value that matches with x equals 1 and just multiply that by the ratio or the multiplier to the x minus 1 power and get y. And that's going to work perfectly. And I can check by plugging the answers back in either by using my graphing calculator. I can go to y equals and clear off this stuff I have here because I don't need that. But then type in this equation, 12 times 3 raised to the x minus 1, and it better generate this table. And if I go to the table, and I scroll down, I look at 1, I get 12. At 2, I get 36. At 3, I get 108. And at 4, I get 324. So I know I did that equation correctly. And that's how I can just write an equation, or an equation for a table of data, just like I do for the apparent formula. I have to do the same thing. I have to figure out if there's a multiplier or an addition. And I can use this exact same formula, just change it so that the n is an x and the a sub n is a y. And that's it. And I can do it a different way. There's more than one way to do everything in math. So if I look at an arithmetic sequence, okay? So let's have an arithmetic sequence uh, in table format, but let's have it not start counting at, at 1. Let's shift it so that you don't see the first term. I give you maybe like the fourth or the fifth term or the sixth term or something like that. So let's start with the table. Let's have it start at 4. And let's go 4, 3, 5, 5, 6, 7, and then 7, 9. And I want to write the equation for this one. OK, so I'm going to use what I know from arithmetic sequences. And I know that this has a plus 2, a plus 2, and a plus 2. So if I were writing the apparent formula for the arithmetic sequence, I know that it's going to be 2. And it would be n minus 1 for a sequence, but for an equation it would be x minus 1. And then I have to add the first term, the a sub 1 term. But this 
is not a sub 1. This is a sub 4. So what do I need to do to find a sub 1? Well, there's a bunch of things I can do. Uh, the easiest one is to use uh, the knowledge of the pattern has to work both directions. So if I add 2 as the x increases, that means to go backwards I have to subtract 2. So I'm going to do a little bit of side work here. And I know at 4, the value is 3. So if I go backwards, what's the value at 3, what's the value at 2, and what's the value at 1? Because I know my apparent formula for an arithmetic requires the first one, the a sub 1, when x is 1. So then I go backwards, so I'm not adding 2, I'm going to subtract 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and then negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So this would be the a sub 1 value that I put here. And I set that equal to y, and I check to make sure this thing works. So I get my trusty calculator, and I can check my equations. I'm going to type this in as exactly as it is, negative 3 plus 2 times x minus 1 in parentheses, close the parentheses, and I better get the table I'm looking for. So in order to do that, I go to the table, and I check and see what I'm given. So at 4, I better have 3. And at 4, I have 3. At 5, do I have 5? Why, yes, I do. At 6, do I have 7? Yep. And at 7, do I have 9? Yep. So that means that this equation works, as did this one. Yay. Now there's another technique um, that isn't based on knowing how arithmetic or geometric sequences work. It's just based on finding uh, a 0 value. And it's going to turn out to be something called a y-intercept. Um, but for now, let's look at this next table. Let's start with x and y. And let's look at the relationship that is, uh, let's see. Let's start with 3. Uh, and let's make that a 3. And then 4 is going to be a 6. And 5 is going to be a 9. And 6 is going to be a 12. Okay, so I want to write the equation for this, and I want to do this in a not apparent formula kind of way. I just want to look at this in a different way. So I do, I, I still have to do the same thing that I would for a sequence. I have to figure out the pattern in the y's, because that's going to tell me what my equation has in it. So if I look at going from 3 to 6, and 6 to 9, and 9 to 12, it's a plus 3 every time. And then I'm going to use logic. Um, I'm going to think, well, I need to repeatedly add 3, so I know the equation has a 3 times an x in it. It has to, has to, has to have a 3 times an x in it, because a repeated addition of the same number over and over again translates into a, a multiplication. So it's going to be 3x equals something with a y. But I know this rule doesn't work, because if I test it out, and I go to my calculator, and I test it, I test 3x, and I go to the table, at 3, I get 9 instead of 3. And at 4, I get 6 instead of 12. Now if I look at this, these numbers in my table are actually 6 lower than everything that's 3x. So I know what I have to do to 3x to make it work. So if I go to y equals, and let's just compare. I'm going to take 3x and I'm subtract off 6, because it looked like everything was 6 lower. So now if I go to the table and I check the second one, at 3, I get the 3 I need then at two, 4 I get the 6 I need, at 5 I get the 9, and at 6 I get the 12. So that meant that what I have to do to fix this equation to make it work is say minus 6. Now I want to notice something, I want you to notice something in the table. I'm going to not show the 3x, and I only want to see 3x minus 6. So I go to this table and I look at it, and I scroll up, and I see what happens when x is 0. Well when x is 0, I get that minus 6 that I need. So another way to write these rules for an apparent formula is to go back and figure out what the 0 value is and that 0 value is what had to be added or subtracted to make the rule work. That's another way to do this. You can also do this with the geometric sequence. Instead of being an addition though, it's going to be a multiplication.